Welcome, Soundies, to our Sound for Video session, and welcome, Soundspeeds. Thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Great to be back here, Curtis. And with, with good audio, I might add, I got so, <laughs> so annoyed. The last time we did our live stream, I had basically set up my video again. I had reinstalled driver, set everything back up, and that was the first thing I had done that day after I did this, not realizing that StreamYard was going to pick the on-camera audio which when I went back and watched the, the video before my mouth dropped, I was like, oh my gosh, my sound is so bad. So this time that was the big question I had is, are you hearing this microphone? And I started tapping on it. He's like, yes, that's the one I hear. I'm like, good. Okay. Now we're ready for a live stream. So that's, that's the that's only right. thing on my, on the only thing that I really was on my agenda that I had to say straight out of the gate, as long as we have the right microphone, I don't, I, right. I could be you know in darkness for all we care, but <laughs> as long as the sound is good. That's what we care about. That's right. And it's. I am also very grateful that you have forgiven me for that uh, omission that I didn't call that out. I was. I do remember when we were getting set up for that one, I'm like, okay, he's using a, a boom mic that doesn't have a lot of low end today. That's cool if that's what he wants. Um. <laughs> if he wants to sound bad, he will. That's fine. I'm not going to tell him to make it sound good because I will sound good. I'm Curtis. As long as I sound oh. good, that's all I care about. Yeah, and I've also well, I've done live streams too where I did not sound great, so I've I've been there. In no, any case, fine. in any case, let's um, we're going to talk today about a boom pull. We're going to start there at least. We've got probably lots to talk about. Um, What's a boom pull? Um, well, actually, with that, why don't we start with you? Who are you, and why are you here? I'm here because I'm the only person that would accept your invite for today. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, my name is Alan. I'm a uh, boom operator. I've been a boom operator for, for years at this point. Uh, also um, host the SoundSpeeds YouTube channel, which has been going for six years strong at this point. And uh, basically, I am quite opinionated. I'm, I'm also very much a, a, you know, a stickler about detail and, and things like that. So it's like, uh, you know, when it comes down to boom poles, it's something that we put in our hands. We use them all day long. It is the primary tool we use to get our sound. And so to me, it's very much part of what we do. It's part of the way Ken Strain words it is that a, a boom pole is an extension of us. And I really like that wording. It's very accurate. It is literally something that we use to position and we have to be in harmony with it. So, mm -hmm. so we can do what we need to do. So I really, you know feel strongly about boom poles. Yeah. How many boom poles do you have? 22. <laughs> I buy them to keep other people from having them. No, seriously, I I've uh, I have so many at this point. And then um, some of them I've acquired throughout this channel and as I've done reviews of different things. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I've also helped redesign some. So over the years, I've, I've reached out to a few companies and pestered them until they've they've conformed and done done some of the things that that, that I've recommended and, and some of them are a little more stubborn they say well this is you know this our our studies have shown and when we put these in someone's hand in someone's hands they say well this is a great poll and I'm like yes because it is but it could be better and they're like but this is what the you know when we interview people and we poll people this is what they say I'm like yes and polls are also the reason why we had new coke back in the 1980s you know if yeah. anybody remembers that um, the whole Coca-Cola classic thing when they finally brought back new Coke because someone decided that it was a good idea to put NutraSweet inside of Coke and instead of sugar. And then when it came back, it was actually high fructose corn syrup. So a little bit of, oh, you know, some, tidbit some of knowledge nuance. for you. Yeah, they also changed yeah, yeah. things like it used to say on a can that it was two servings. Now it only says one. That was one of the changes they made back in the eighties too. Mm. Okay. All the all the nuances that you let's didn't just think throw you would out get. a whole bunch of random let's facts try. and not talk about. <laughs> let's see how long we can do this intro and talk about anything but boom poles. Yeah, right. <laughs> so. No, um, well, actually, Bandrew had a little bit of a question for you. I don't know if you saw that there. Uh, um, who am I, and uh, and why are you here, and how dare you? Um, yeah. Who am I? <laughs> I am who I, I am, that. and yep. uh, why are you here? Because I said yes, and. <laughs> Curtis uh, had nobody 
else would accept him today. Uh, and the uh, reality is, is who else is, who else am I going to talk to about boom poles? Like r- realistically, who am I going to talk to about boom poles that that actually knows what they're talking about? Well, I, I mean, there's there's plenty of boom ops out there in the world, but you know, maybe not some that that are going to, you know. Be, be as crazy passionate about it on YouTube, perhaps. Yeah, but uh, that, that's what we're I'm looking, looking for. at this one right here. Yes, this is the Deity Boom Pole. It's an 8.5 foot, five section ENG pool. Now, now tell us what does that mean? What is 8.5? Where does that fit? And what does ENG mean? Okay, uh, 8.5 feet is rather small. So normally, if if it's small, this is already a five section boom. You can tell by the number of se- of of knuckles that are on there. Um, it's either going to be four or it's going to be five. Sometimes the last knuckle is used to tighten and loosen the tip, but mm-hmm. I don't think that's the case on the deity. And ENG is electronic news gathering, which is basically what you would use for sit down interviews. If you were doing man on the street style interviews, if you're doing uh, reality type things and you need to quickly extend out a boom pole to throw over someone, you don't need to have a 16, 18 footer. Usually all you yeah. need is, you know, because the cameras are going to be rather close, you know, within a few feet of talent. So that's usually long enough and plenty long enough for you to throw out over somebody. So Didi is starting off with this pole at a 8.5 foot. So that means because it's so short, it's going to collapse down nicely inside a luggage. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to travel with it inside, it even says includes a rigid travel case. Yep. In fact, I've got that right here. And it collapses down to, incidentally, it collapses down to 27 and a half inches or 69.9 centimeters. And it's a five section? Let's double check. The reason I'm asking Four knuckles. Four knuckles, yep. Four knuckles. The reason I'm asking is because if it's four knuckles and it's five sections... And it only goes down to two, you said 20, how many inches? 27 and a half. So it's over two feet when it's already in its shortest. Mm -hmm. So it makes me wonder as to, they must be doing something on the inside. And we'll look look at this. We'll dissect it here in in a bit. Because normally the reason why you would have so many sections, like five sections, or if it was six, it collapses down. The, the smaller it collapses, you run into two things. Number one is it's a smaller little package that you can easily, you know, take with you places. But right. then one of the things you run into is that the smaller the sections are, you, you're you going to, if you have more knuckles and you're going to have, those knuckles are going to start to add length to the pole also. Mm-hmm. So the more knuckles you have, you have to, you know, count that as part of it. Now, on the inside of each of the carbon fiber sections, because it is carbon fiber, it said there, it says on it the is. screen. It is. Then... Depending on the amount that you can extend out the pole mm-hmm. on the inside, how much is kept on the inside of that pole? Because basically what you end up having is you have an, a bigger tube and then the smaller tube that goes inside of that. Mm-hmm. And there's if it barely held onto just the tiniest little bitty bit like that, then it would be a lot of, of weight right there on that little bitty point. So what you normally do is you put more of the, the carbon fiber sections inside of the larger section to yep. hold on to it. Normally on smaller poles – you don't have as much on the inside because this pole here, if it goes down to just over two feet and it's five sections, it extends out. I would actually expect it to be closer to 10. Um, uh, so they must be keeping a little bit more inside the pole. But we'll we'll see. I could be wrong because Deity did not send me this pole. So I don't I have not done any homework or seen it. This is what you're showing us today is the first time I've seen this pole at all, uh, aside from, the, you know, the showcase in the DD video. So, OK, OK, I'm interested right. in seeing it, though. Yeah. So, so what, what do what do what do we what do we want to talk about next? So here I've got uh, we can run through the rest of the specs here. They always so, do a great job with their production, you know, photos and stuff. So true. it collapses yeah. down to twenty seven point five inches, eight and a half feet. And I love how it tells us that it can fit in a medium sized suitcase, but they give it to you in, in in some case. That's great. CNC aluminum, which is the same kind of material, the same aluminum that they use in their slates and other and and their uh, transmitters, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or at least their connect transmitters. I can't speak for the Theo system. All yeah. right. The the total weight of the pull is 1.1 pounds, 540 grams. Okay. That's that's light. That's, that is indeed light. That is light. It's um I can't I can't recall what the weight is of other similar uh boom poles, but that is light. 
and a lot of the, a lot of that weight will be held in your hands until you extend it, which is good because you know smaller. The more sections you have, usually that means that you can keep more of the weight in your hands and extend out only the ones you need, which is good. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. yep. So <laughs> next, You're foam laughing. isolating <laughs> hand grip. I'm not no, nothing behind it. Just first impressions. Okay. Usually, when there is any kind of foam on a boom pole, foam helps to mitigate handling noise. So usually when there's foam on a boom pole, I call that a red flag because what that basically tells me is that there could be transfer noise that happens from your hand going into any, any microphone that's connected to it. Mm -hmm. So if there is, if the carbon fiber is not made properly, if it's not isolated properly, it could transfer sound straight into the microphone. Now it could just be something to try to train you to put your hands in the right place. The newer NW088 boom pole is basically that way. It has two little hand uh, places that are about this long, and they're fo both foam, but they show you basically on the pole, they put them only where you want them to grab, mm -hmm. where they want you to grab the pole. They don't put it along the entire thing. So it's interesting to me that uh, there's only one of them, or is, it, is, there, just, is there two? Yeah, just one, just one. And it's and just they, on the very end of the pole. It's on the end of the pole. And they also say that it is removable if you prefer. So you can take it off. It's not. It does it, look like it would slide right off that rubber bit at the back. So that's yep, good. Yep. Um, that seems to me to be an extra feature. Now, if it slides off, you would also perhaps slide it forward. So personally, what I would do with this, and mm -hmm. you can perhaps check this, one of the very first things, is slide that hand grip closer to the front knuckle as, a closed, uh, as, a, as opposed to the rubber bumper on the back. Because the butt end of a, of a boom pole, you can easily, if you wanted to, grab hold of that rubber bit back there. When mm -hmm. you're talking about acoustics, the, the, usually there's, there's different things that you look at. Like, for example, if it's a solid liquid or gas, the denser the mass is, the better sound vibrations will travel through it. But rubber is one of those things that carries sound a lot worse than pretty much anything else. I think if memory serves, someone could check us on this, rubber sound can only travel through rubber at like 60 meters per second as opposed to 343 meters per second for, for air. Because that does not tran transfer sound very well at all, mm -hmm. it usually makes a great thing for you to grab hold of on a boom pole if you have it. So being that that is on the back part of the boom, I'd say grab hold of that. It's going to be farthest away from the microphone at that point and yep. slide that foam up towards the, uh, the front knuckle is what I would normally say to do if you're going to keep it on there. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. So we'll take a look at that in just a second here. Um, let's see. Anything else that we missed here? So the the, the pole tip thread is of course three eighths inch. That's pretty standard. That's what pole you expect. Pole end cap mount. Yeah. What is that? So let me show you. So by the way, so this this is the DOD pole right here behind me. Uh, today we have the DPA forty seventeen B mounted. Ah, I love it. I love <laughs> that, it for, Mike. Did it for Alan. Um, it's an externally cabled. There is no internal cabling in the pole. Just so everyone is clear on that as well. And let's let me let me grab it here. Okay. Notice how long armed, you know, Curtis is. He literally just reached across the room and grabbed the boom. That shows his wingspan. He's like, you know, 30 feet tall. So his arm span would be long. So let me shorten it up here. So interestingly, okay. so, so here's the foam on the back of the pole. Mm -hmm. And there's can actually you put this yourself bigger on the screen, please. Oh yeah. 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 Good point. Yep. Can do get this off of here. Okay. There we go. There we go. Thank you. All right. So foam right here, uh, first knuckle here. There is this rubber end cap that actually pops off. Okay. And then there's another uh, rubber, essentially stopper that that screws into a three eighths inch tap on the bottom of the pole. Okay. So that's the that's what sits on the bottom of the pole, and this is a three eighths inch tap back here. So I'd be willing to bet you the reason why that's on there is because. Oh, no, I'm wrong. That is basically to thread inside of that end. So that's probably for what, a counterweight? Or I, I could possibly be. Could it does they never say anything about it in their marketing materials, but you could get a Or you could replace that. You could replace it if you get it all chewed up somehow. Mm-hmm. And then there's a but cover. you see that uh, my first initial thought was that that's a screw that way that if you collapse the sections it would you know hit that on the end but it it wouldn't be a, that's, it wouldn't be a place to mount a wireless transmitter right I mean you wouldn't do that I'm not aware of any type of a transmitter that would mount off of a female like that right 
if anything, if anything, you could use another tip and have it a double sided boom pole. You could you could put a quick release through uh, screw a quick release on the other side too, and then. But no, that's that's that would be for a tip for a another. That would be you put the screw type that the um. No, that would be the base of a shock mount. That's the wrong style. That's the wrong uh, end. Yeah. So maybe they're going to make some sort of a threaded thing that has a hook on it or something that would allow you to counterweight it and use the frame of the boom pole. That would be what I would su I would suspect yeah. because you could screw something on there. And and if not, DD should, you know, if they're actually watching this, they should think about that because if you have something on there, there's got to be some sort of a purpose and a counterweight would be a good place for that. You know, if you were going to be doing a long sit down type interview. Yeah. So if a cherry here says that it is to. for a counterweight, it, it it was on Deity's preview video. So that oh, okay. makes sense. That makes okay, sense. Okay, cool. Yep. There you go. And I like Good. that. Now, the only thing I will say is that that rubber bit came off very easily. And so because it is designed to come off easily, you need to be careful. A lot of the times boom operators, when they're holding a pole, you'll pull back on that rubber bit. And you'll try to do that as a, as a as as you're trying to muscle shift. So if you do that and you pull back, and that just comes you know flying off really quick and easy, then be careful because that's one of those things that will catch you, and you'll end up dropping your hand will slide off, and you'll drop the front of the pole. So that's a good thing to be aware of. That might catch somebody. And I like that you just slid the the foam up to the tip there yeah it's a pretty um i was concerned that it was it was actually a little easier than i expected but it doesn't move around a whole lot i was concerned that it would err on one side or the other like it would be too too slippy um it's not um, one suggestion i would actually have really to deity on this tip and if they would have consulted me beforehand or mentioned the pole beforehand one of the things i would have told them is that because so many boom operators pull back because your 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 arms do tire and what yeah. you'll start to do is f figure out different ways of holding the pole and pulling on certain parts of it. If you have a flow through, for example, some boom operators will literally put a finger inside and pull back on that to change the the way that you hold it. So I would have actually said Deity should perhaps take a rubber, the rubber bit and have the th the screws type thread on the bottom of that so that you could screw that into the back of the boom. That way you could still hold it. Mm. So that would have been a suggestion I would have had. But then they might say, well, if we put the screw straight through the end of it, how are they going to support it? But, you yeah. know, yeah. there's that too. Incidentally, while we're here, why don't I um, fully collapse this? Mm -hmm. I'm doing it the wrong, wrong side first. And that's their uh, their tip going to the ASM-1, right? That's the is, yep. Does that tip come with the ASM-1 or does that tip come with the... Um... Tip comes with the pole. Okay, that's that's cool. So the little extra mount that sticks out. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Uh, look back at the shock mount for a second. Where the XLR plugs in, it yes. sticks out away from the pole. Oh yeah, the the hanger. Yep. Okay, that's it, it, XLR tip or or whatever is what I'm used to calling that. So sorry, that's a an ambient name. Is that does that come with the AS? Oh, that does come with ASM one. I'm literally looking right at it. I should yep. answer my own questions because. <laughs> It's literally right here. Yep. I've been using the ASM one. I, I should answer my own questions and stop being dumb. <laughs> You've been using it for a little bit. Sounds. I like. have um, for the past few months. Actually, it's a very versatile. I personally really like the ASM one. It does a really good job. It's a very similar to a liar design, um, but I mean, it's it does its job really well, and it's it's very good at what it does. It's not designed for a boom pole, per se. If you look at their marketing, or at least it didn't used to be, it's not marketed for boom poles, but it's good enough to be on a boom pole. Maybe if they just change a couple little things to it. That's Got at least it. my thoughts on it. It's interesting to me that uh, when you look at the uh, marketing material for this, look at the photograph. So look at the, the, the headliner photograph. It's on a C stand. Mm -hmm. um, so it's they're not hand operating. Uh, yeah. And there's not a single shot in here where someone is hand operating, but uh, yeah. we'll we'll come to that and in a little bit more. But you see, that's that's it's it's clever because they basically advertise it as you know the way it is. They they don't you don't have to say this is for a boom operator. So that way, if someone ever uses it as a uh, as a boom, they could say, look, well, it's it's got a GoPro attachment at the bottom of it, for example. Mm -hmm. So 
it's not a traditional style style of mount, but it is, in my opinion, good enough to use for it. If they were to change that little GoPro attachment at the bottom, then it would be so much better. It would just, you know, it's good enough to be, in my opinion. The way they've built it, it's designed to be very good. And it's got rubber, for example, on the inside. You can see the uh, suspensions the, on the clips where it clips on. It's rubber on the inside there, which is good. The bows of the that that hold the suspension, they're liars. I love liars. The fact that they build the the little XLR tip part that sticks out in a way that allows there to be a little pigtail, which helps to also absorb some of that that sound. And it also, if you notice, some vibration that would come up and hit that XLR would go through, and then it mounts to the bottom base of the shock mount as a further point of of dissipating some of the vibration before it even goes into the microphone. So to me, it's very well designed. It looks to me like it's it's kind of got some of the best parts of the Sinella shock mounts that you see and liars. Um, and the fact that it sticks out far away from the boom pole means that you can put any transmitter you want to on there. Some of them, the tips are very, very short together. Some of the Sinellas, for example, have a, have a mount that only barely sticks out. If you mount a transmitter, like you want to mount a cube style, it's not going to give you any room for it. You're going to have to extend out a pole, keep that section constantly open, and even then it's going to be touching the edge of the boom. So they, in my opinion, did a great job with the uh, uh, the ASM-1. I like it a lot, especially at a $100 price point. It's brilliant, in my opinion, yeah. that they were able to do it for that. So but, just just for so people understand the the reference to GoPro, so the, <laughs> the mounting uh, hardware on this you can actually pop off the part that normally mm -hmm. attaches to the tip of the boom pole and it has that same um i don't even know what to call this connection point here but it's the they same they call it a gopro mount or they call it a yeah, yeah. action camera style hinge right and their and their their pitch here is that you could use this to anywhere that you can if you need to plant a mic anywhere that you can put a gopro mount you can mount your mic with the mm -hmm. liar with, with, with the asmr one which is pretty and there's cool. so many different things you can get like uh gorilla arms and stuff like that for gopros i understand yeah. why they why they market it that way but personally i would like to see a version of the asm1 if they in my opinion if they just made the mount different so that it would mount more to boom poles to me it would be a better fit for booms because this this shock mount is good enough in my opinion to be to be used on a boom pole but i would like to see a different you know something other than that gopro hinge yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Okay, back to the boom pole, though. Back to the boom pole. Okay. What else do you want to know about it? Well, I moved the um, phone forward, so now... Okay, we, you moved the we'll, pole we'll... forward. So now if you were to connect it back up and we were to listen to it, you can hear... We'll start with the handling noise. Okay. Okay, and... We always uh, extend the top section first, right? Smallest section first, absolutely. I usually like to leave some space between knuckles here just to mm -hmm. make it a little easier to manage when, if I have to quickly extend it. So I put like basically a hand grip. Yeah, well, that's also part of what we'll do is we'll check the, the strength of each one of those knuckles here in a second. Okay. Because that's part of what we'll, what we'll test as well. Okay. Now we're externally... External cable, so I've got to mm -hmm. kind of manage that. All right, we ready to have me uh, bring this mic up and see what you can hear. Now, here's the thing: I <laughs> I have two sets of headphones because of Streamyard, so I'm gonna. You're my ears, okay? Mm -hmm. For this, for this one, you're my ears. You ready for the handling noise sample? Yeah. Uh, are you you're bringing down your mic, or you're gonna leave it up and just be I'm quiet? Gonna, I can, I'm gonna bring down my okay. mic here cool. and 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 bring that one up. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we're now on the DPA, so. We heard Curtis's lovely voice off access into that back part of that microphone. You would think he would know how to use a shotgun and which side to speak into. My gosh. I'm hearing a little bit of handling noise. A little bit in there. I'll talk softer. That way um, you can listen. You can hear that shifting around. Okay, Curtis, now do me a favor. Slide the phone back to the back part of the boom where it originally was, and then put your hand up at the right where, keep your hands right where they are, but this okay. time just slide the, the phone back. Okay, I've um, moved back to this mic for now so that you don't have to hear this atro atrocious. 
Okay. It's a bit of work to get it yeah. down there. That's, and that's good. good, though. That's good. good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. It's now okay. approximately in the same section. So now... Should be more handling noise this time. So when so so talk to us about technique here. Okay, I'm. Uh, I want you to do the same thing you just did before because I want to hear it as a comparison without that foam there with the foam in the back where it originally was. Because your hand, the only difference now is that your your, your leading hand, your front hand, is now unpadded, so it should increase the handling noise. Let's listen. I think the only thing we're really hearing is a whoosh on the microphone. There's a little, little bit in there. That might be though. Here, let me see the tip of that microphone again, please. Okay. There's noise transfer from something. Can you, I can you um, collapse the pole or, or just bring your uh, slide it down so we can look at the tip? Because there's handling noise coming from something. I tell you what, let's let's uh, unwrap the cable and just let it hang free, and then we can that way we can tell if the if the cable's not touching anything, if it's the boom pole itself that's transferring the cable through, or if it is something happening on the on the shock mount end. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely a handling handling style noise. Okay, so it does sound like it has more handling noise with that foam down there. So let's bring it back up to the tip. I'd like to hear it again, if you don't mind, with uh, the foam up where it was before. Where, where so I think it was better up there. Okay, switch it back over to the 4017. Doesn't sound any different, really. This sounded a little better, actually. Okay. Okay, so you asked about about technique. Yeah. Normally, there's a trick that you can use. If you put your hand on the aluminum knuckle itself, as opposed to the carbon fiber itself, it will have to go through, and, and it will usually help, even though, yes, I know that carbon fiber doesn't transfer sound nearly as well as aluminum does, but usually that adds a little bit more of a buffer because it's a difference of material. It goes from the metal to the carbon fiber as opposed to carbon fiber to carbon fiber, carbon fiber. So okay. usually putting your hand on a knuckle will help you with a little bit of that handling noise. Let's listen again. That actually helped tremendously right there. What is that squeak noise, though? That doesn't seem to be... It seems to me to be something on the shock mount side. Is it all the way screwed in? Is the cable... Is everything tight, like the hinge and... Let's save your ears for just a moment. Uh, uh -huh. That's all tight. Yeah, it doesn't sound like tra regular transfer noise. That sounds to me like an actual handling. Like... Could it be that I have the this so I'm cable looking at is... too tight? Um, give it just a little bit more space to to move around on the liars. Like, here's what I'm doing. If you notice, I don't even have mine going through the little thing here. Oh, just skip that? I, I, I skip it altogether because I just allow it to, to hang free. This cable is stiff enough. So... I just let it go, you know, okay. go Let's free. Let's try that. Let's try that. I don't know that it really changed anything. Okay. Again, this is not really designed for hand holding. So let's try a little uh, let's try a little voodoo trick here. Let's let's take the end of this, we're going to unplug it, and I want you to see if you can add a very loose knot into it, into right here. Very loose. So, okay. So, we're going to disconnect 
Yeah. The XLR. See if you can add a very loose knot in that cable, because if you do any kind of handling with something like this, a very loose knot like that, if it's try to try to pull a little bit of the slack out of the cable, there you go. Make a make a little bit because knots, believe it or not, if you have a lav mic, for example, or you have something like that, sometimes those little knots, if you can add it and have it have it up there so that the knot doesn't itself slip, sometimes that helps dissipate some handling noise. So Deity would probably do well to if if they were to release an ASM one for for a boom pole, change out that cable. I would recommend L4E5C Canary Star Quad. L4E5C. Take a note. Write that down, Deity. See if they have a, a, a yellow a yellow version of it. Uh, I'm sure they could make a yellow version. Uh, they, so, I think okay. they offer it. <laughs> here we go. Okay, back on the DPA here. No, it's something else. Okay, hold on one second. Okay. Let me look at the suspension at the end there for a second. Make sure that the liars are are at the optimal at the optimum. Um, right. So they shouldn't be they shouldn't be like tweaked in either. They direction, shouldn't be right? in too much, or they should just basically be like if you quite literally. I would say remove the knot there because it really didn't seem to help a whole lot with that particular cable. Okay. I'd say remove the knot first and gives a little bit more more room to play with. And then I would say remove the shot, uh, remove the microphone all the way, and then connect up the 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 actual um, connect. Uh, oh, well, okay, yeah. Remove the microphone, please. There we go. It is in the frame. Okay. Now slide your thumb. Is the is the, is the windscreen all the way on there? Yep. All right. Good. So. Use your thumb and find the balance point right perfectly in the middle of where that is weighted, where the, the, the microphone and the cable and everything. And now, if you removed your top finger, okay, so that right there is the center balance point. Because the two bows on this shock mount are identical, that's the middle bound to, balance point. Now, place that perfectly centered between those two, uh, you know, bows. And that way... That 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 the the bows are basically not, they're not arching they're not trying to to go in they're not trying to go out they're basically just in a perfect that's going to balance it as perfect as possible where even tension is on both of those even bows right there okay. so let's try that first all right here we go. I think it sounds better. I'm not hearing as much handling noise now. You do have that mic up, right? Yeah. I still hear a little bit. Yeah. But Can it's, a, it's better than it was. It's better than it was, I think. So okay. that's that's good. That's an improvement. Okay. All right. Yeah. So balance points. So there's a technique that uh, we can all take home with us and take to our yeah. next job with us. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, um, let's take, if you extend out the pole now, See what happens if you keep your hand on that leading hand, either on the foam or on the, the knuckle itself, and slide your finger up and down the actual boom pole, you know, the last segment, the segment that's designed to, to for you to handhold the operation of the pole at the biggest section. It's not being caught by a gate or anything there. It is that mic that's up. Beautiful. Let me double check, but there should be no gate. On channel number two, the compressor is off. The there's gate. no roll off or anything like that on the... Gate's off. Ah, there there's... is a high pass filter at 57 hertz. Should okay. I turn that off? Yes, please. Let's, let's, let's hear this all in the raw. Okay, switching back over. And there's no there there's no high shelf or anything like that on the microphone selected. I know that's a B preamp for the DPA forty seventeen. Let me double check that actually. We're gonna double check that before we do our next test here. Do the the when you first see the switches on the forty seventeen B, I was like, oh, those are so cool. And then after using it for a while, I'm like, eh, I'm not so sure those are so cool because they're. 
sometimes they can slide like halfway between and you're like, what, what's it doing here? Another thing is it, it on some 4017s, it's a point of extra tension. So you can actually tighten it or loosen it a little bit. And sometimes it will either go, uh, it will basically lock in place or it's too loose and it will, it's a, it's a point of contact that, you know, you have to be careful of. Yeah. Okay. We're going to switch back over. Now we have the high pass filter turned off, all other processing off. Okay, good. It's always interesting to me. Uh, could you extend out the pole when you do that? Because sometimes what will happen is you'll hear the actual handling of the, the, the boom through the microphone as opposed to the transfer noise going through. Now, you may end up arguing that if you hear it, you hear it. And that's true. But he's also in an extremely quiet environment right now. So if it's that quiet and the pole is is very collapsed and the microphone itself may be able to pick up the acoustic sound going through as opposed to going through transferring through the uh, pole i think the only the only thing we're hearing right now is the the natural holding of the the leading hand right there on the pole because i don't hear that transferring very well at all which means it's good it's good now, the only thing I would say also is try it over the phone now, and let's see if that changes. All right, so the foam isn't actually helping a whole lot. Yeah, it's whooshing. You have... Um, you probably have air, uh, air in uh, the the air in your in your studio. There is not stagnant, is it? It's moving. No, no air conditioning down here. That's why in the winter time, people are like Curtis. You look so cold. <laughs> it's a, it's an unheated, un air conditioned basement. Interesting. What you may you have, have heard a... there is a there is a freezer. Um, I to 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 extend the pole and actually stay in frame like I was there. Mm -hmm. I had to stick the microphone through past my sound blanket over here and there is a freezer with a compressor running over there no it was definitely it sounds to me like um microphones are usually very delicate uh mm -hmm. to any kind of moving and if there's stagnant air that just does not move because there's no airflow um then then it will be better than it would be if there's oh. pressure pressure in the air that's why i was asking got it got it because it seems oh but but then i remember that you what is your elevation where you live Six thousand feet. Okay, so that's not terrible, but it is higher than what most people would probably run into. So maybe pressure on this forty seventeen differently than what we're used to. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I tell you. Uh, let me let me ask you this then. If you were to slide your fingers over the carbon fiber sections, how does it feel? Is it is it pretty smooth, or do you feel any splinters or anything that feels like? Uh, do you feel any texture? Because it is a textured boom pole. Do, do you feel little lumps or is it just completely smooth? Seems nice and smooth. I was actually surprised. Yeah, I mean, unless they like to send the, 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 the they go through and inspect them all and said, okay, this is a good one. Let's send, <laughs> send this one to Curtis. I don't know. I don't think, I doubt they do that, but. I don't um, think they would. It's, uh, it feels good. It <laughs> actually anything, feels quite would, good. <laughs> if anything, I would expect them to, uh. To to do if if they were to send one to me, do that and say, make sure this one's good before we send it in. <laughs> but uh... yeah, no, it's uh, it does okay. feel pretty solid. I will say, um, some other polls that I've used, as far as the um, the feel of the knuckles when you when you release the knuckles and um, move things around. Some are smoother than others. This is not the, this is, feels okay. It's not the mm -hmm. smoothest I've ever felt, but it yeah. feels okay. And I don't know if that's a, you know, they have to use something in there that, a lot, that, that there's an, a, there's a point at which there has to be touching between the inner pole and the outer mm -hmm. pole. And there, I, I assume it's some sort of isolating material of some sort. Yes. And that's actually where we're going to go next. I was going to ask you if you could collapse all the sections 
except for that very first knuckle next to the the section you handhold. That way, everything is very tight. Because what we're going to do is we're going. I'm going to ask you to unscrew that knuckle that's closest to your hand. Okay. Because I want to see what's under there. I want to see how the locking mechanism is. Yes, right there. Now, if you look at it, it looks like the amount that's sticking out. It looks like it extends out almost the exact same amount that it would go inside the pole. So it means that it, it what that tells me is there's probably very little holding on to the inside of the pole right there too. So once he unscrews that, you're going to see probably a piece of plastic. Usually on the the, the less expensive uh, boom poles, you're going to see a piece of plastic, and it's and it's usually the lock is is a place on the inside. Okay, so what is that? It looks like it's the two pieces of plastic that fit together in in two different um, hemispheres. Is that right? Two different halves? Yeah, it did exactly. Okay, that is a monopod style design. That's a that's what they do on a lot of monopods. And it's it's designed, you know, and, and some of the more inexpensive uh, boom poles will do that because it's easier for them to do that. That's not necessarily just a bad thing. The big question I have is that material right there, does that transfer noise? Because that is the point of contact. You, and you notice how small that was. There's very little. That plastic right there is a direct, is the, is the point where that intersection is connecting to the outer section. And that right there is a big point. That material, if it is a, if it transfer, if, if it transfers vibration through there, like you can actually take it and slide your finger like this across, across it and hear the transfer sound directly on that piece of plastic. Cause some plastics are designed for it to be, uh, to dissipate some vibrations. You can actually get some material and a lot of the more premium boom poles that use something like that. Like k -Tech uses Delrin, which is a very, it, it is designed to absorb. Now slide your finger from there, slide it back like this, as opposed to this way, slide your finger lengthwise all the way across and then do the same thing over the, the regular pole itself. Okay, so it's slightly attenuated on that plastic. Okay. Now, what would you guess as to the length of that piece of plastic there? Just that little plastic piece. Is that about two thirds mm. of an inch, maybe? No, no. Inch, I would say inch and a quarter. From the plastic to the tip or is the piece of plastic itself? From here okay, to, from, the, to, to here. Now, to that piece of ends. plastic. Okay. Yep. Uh -huh. so, so you have, have it like this and there's a piece of plastic right here. Yep. That piece of plastic, what's the width of that, would you guess? One and one quarter inch. Okay. Now, what about not to the end of the boom pole, but just the piece of plastic, the width of just the, the oh, piece well, of plastic? See, the thing is, is that the plastic on part of it, it only goes, it's only about three quarters of an inch. And then the other part actually goes to the end. So it okay. goes, so there's like a notch here that only is, that's only about three quarters of an inch. It's kind of hard to see. It's probably yeah, what my problem is. Is there a yeah. way, to, can you put yourself full screen for a second and help us out a little yeah, bit? you bet. I'm just uh, trying to, to get an eye of that. Because that little bitty piece of plastic there, if it's only like two thirds, three quarters of an inch, and, and then there's an extra bit going over to the tip, that's designed to help, you know, the plastic will hold it a little bit better. And then... See that there's a notch right through. there? Yeah. But then if I turn it, it goes all the way to the end. I pole. see. That's interesting. And then there's a notch on the other side as well right here. And then the, the plastic actually extends over uh, the end of the carbon fiber tubing here. But that's the biggest section too. So, so nothing's designed to go over the tip. So the next thing we'll look at is the next knuckle, the next biggest knuckle. So that's interesting because they, they put less material there, but they still extend it all the way to the end, which is good. So it's got about a good, what, inch and a half. So you shouldn't put anything overly heavy if you run it all the way out. Because if you if you do that, then you, what you're going to want to do is keep a little bit more of that material. So back, take it all the way out, then go back in two or three inches to have a little bit more held on the inside if you have to use a heavy wind rig. Okay, next section. Is similar, it the same? similar design. Yeah, it's got the notch. Now, 
is that designed at like you what uh, your finger is directly on the end there so let me think about this so each tube is basically closed off at the end quite a bit interesting the only brand that I know that does anything of the sort is Panamic, but they're not designed to be internally cabled at all. Now, this is not either, it looks like. Like if right. you ran a cable through the inside. And it, but the difference is Panamic actually has pr uh, some, some – it, it des it's designed to use pressure to help, uh, you know, uh, lower some of the uh, – like if you go vertical with it and you unlock it as opposed to going slam, it will – it will it will collapse Slow, slower yeah. slower okay. because of the pressure that's interesting you know it's kind of hard to tell on on camera but i wouldn't say that's a bad thing at all if it's not designed to be internally cabled which yeah. it's not it's not designed to do that at all so they probably are doing that to try to um add some stability with, with while allowing you to extend it out so the thing I said at the very beginning about having extra on the inside of the pole ends up not being the case. So it means they're utilizing their space on the inside of the pole very effectively, which is good. Just be aware if you run it out with a heavy wind Zeppelin or you put a cyclone on there, heavy microphones, it will – you'll need to have more than just a little bitty bit out of each section because the section that's going to – the place that's going to break most often on a carbon fiber pole is this uh, the biggest section right here and then that point where the second biggest section goes right in. Right there at the very tip, that is – that's the point right where those two sections meet. It will break usually right there because that's where the maximum weight is from the entire pole that's extended is right there. So running on the inside, you know, so there's a total of four or five inches on the inside of each segment if you use a, a, a heavy rig. If you're using something like this, you should run it all – you could run it all the way out, and you'll have that full eight-and-a-half-foot length. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. It's that's good. good. Um, All right, should we – oh, sorry, go ahead. The next thing I was going to ask is let's look at the actual locking mechanism on the inside because um, there's probably – when you undid that, the carbon fiber section has to be locked somehow. And so if you can remove – You want to uh, look at the knuckle or the, the thread the threads on this side? Well, there has to be something that it, on the inside of that knuckle right there. Is there a piece on the inside of the knuckle? Because there's got to be something – do you see an extra little piece in there at all? If there is, it's attached to the knuckle itself. It stops as soon as I get to this plastic piece you, here. But if you look inside of it, does it have any play in it at all? If you do this kind of thing to the the aluminum piece, does it does it jiggle at all? Is there anything in there that you can see? Not that I can see. There's a little uh, rim of plastic around the top edge there is, of the knuckle. Yeah. Yes, and that's what the locking mechanism is. So if you take it upside down and just wrap the – no, other way. Flip it upside down Oh, because it's – the there you go. That's going to be how you get it out there. No, 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 no. You're jamming it back into the knuckle at that point. So you should be able to, to break it kind of loose that way. Or you could even press it if you had something like that, like a little paper clip or something like that. You could press that piece of plastic back through so we could see it unless it is somehow snapped into that. Which normally is not the case. Hmm. It's holding on. It's holding okay. on pretty nicely. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a piece of plastic with um, periodic gaps. Mm -hmm. That's because if if it's if it's completely like this, and you start to compress it at the end, there's got to be a point where it, it it basically has something like this on the inside. And as you compress it by pressing it into the the tip, it's got to yeah. have it's got to actually be able to grab around there. I wanted to see what that piece of plastic on the inside looks like. There's no way to get it out without damaging it. Um, I could go get a screwdriver. No, it shouldn't need a <laughs> screwdriver. Do you have a um? <laughs> do you have tweezers? Do you have a paper clip? Not to hand, but okay. let me no just worries. see if I, I'm just looking around to see if there's a little something I could grab here. By the way, it does come with the ASM-1, came with uh, a little XLR colored rings. That's nice. That's because it's based off of a uh, 
It's it's based off of an FXX connector, Neutrik, as opposed to an FX. Yeah, sorry about the mic bump there. I'm going to see if that little piece of plastic can break free, because that's going to tell us a lot about the, the locking mechanism on the inside. Let's say... Uh... Didi's done a nice job making it not so easy. That's not going to do it. Other tools. My Leatherman tool is in the other room. You want to wait while I go grab it? Uh, we can. <laughs> okay, we right can if, you, if, you, if, if you'd like. <laughs> you uh, you uh, keep, it, keep it clean. Oh, Danny has paper clips right over here. Oh, Danny, hello, and thank oh, you. And tweezers. Look at Saving that. the day. Look at Danny. Okay, here Amazing. we go. Uh, if you want to put those right here, that's great. Okay, here we go. Does that mean she is she is listening and she is paying attention? That's oh, awesome. For sure. Yeah. Okay, we might be able to do something here. Okay. That piece of plastic is usually pretty tight on the inside because what what happens is normally there's a a tapered end of the knuckles, which you can see on the tip of it, and that has to go onto something that compresses around the boom to per, to to prevent sliding when you lock it. So that tapered end of the hole will have to, to fit onto something. That's actually part of the thing that on the newest uh, four section um, boom that, that the, the series five ambient booms, um, I helped to redesign that, that locking mechanism on the inside because um, there was a couple of tweaks I thought that needed to be made and, and they made those with their four section. Is it just not wanting to come out? Just doesn't That's want okay. to come out. I mean, That's I could, okay. I could go get a hacksaw. <laughs> Look at that. You see a smile Look on my face. That, that smile makes me very concerned. Let's, let's, let's do it. <laughs> let's, you know, if yeah, Dee's watching this quietly in chat, you know, sitting there saying, don't Alan, don't, 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 don't tell him to do this. Don't tell him to do this. It might be locked on the inside. It might be something that slides in, but I would be willing to bet you that there would be a way to get that off. Cause I'm just curious. It's not that it's a bad thing on the inside there. It's just whatever that is, it would tell us a little bit about the locking mechanism. And again, it's not bad. It could be in any any one of a bunch of different ways. But the fact that the the other the other end of that where it screws into the carbon fiber section, that right there, depending on how far you screw it, is going to depend on how much of it locks on. Because if it locks onto a very, very little ring, it might slide a little bit. If it's more plastic on the inside there, there's going to be more more surface area touching the edge of the boom will be a better lock but that would also give us an idea of um, the locking mechanism so far let me ask you this when you take the pole and take us take out a section and you lock it all the way how much of a twist does it take to unlock it so it slides okay oh tiny 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 bit whoa, whoa beautiful wait wait wait, wait. So like a quarter of a turn. That's exactly what it should be. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Anything anything more than that, and it's usually because the sections are bigger and the threads are smaller. So uh, if it's more than that, if it's more than about a quarter of a turn, you're not going to normally um, – uh, your, your muscle memory may be different. And each section should be about the same. So another thing that will happen sometimes with booms is if you, if you start to lock the – the smaller section or the bigger sections and all the different sections, the same amount will it compress as you start to slide in the sections. Like for example, you have them all extended. If you were to unlock the biggest section and slide in the next biggest and lock it, do you do the exact same amount of twist on each lock as you extend out and come? And there's no slipping. Is It's not like like you do the same exact motion, same amount of twist, and it's not like if you pulled the two sections apart now from the microphone end and the big end. No, no, keep them locked right where you'd want them to be. If you pull it, it shouldn't give. It shouldn't. Good. Good. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I think it really. It's good. It needs to be in your hands. It's so hard to, you know what I mean? It's like so hard. I, to I, I totally this do. Kind of thing. I totally do. I, but, I, I know. Um, and that's why, why, you know, I get so excited. I'm like trying to say the words and my brain's going so much faster <laughs> than my tongue is. 
Yeah, but I yeah. Feel like I feel like I, I feel like I can feel it. Here's the thing that I, I, I feel like okay, it's loose. Uh, still not quite enough. I have to turn it just a little mm-hmm. bit more. Just a tad bit more. Just yeah. a tad bit more. But that means that there's a good point where, where if you wanted to leave it open, for example, and you you wanted to kind of just loosen it enough, so that way you could you could maybe adjust it on the fly if you needed to without having to fully lock and unlock it. That's what that's po- that's for is finding that middle ground where if you needed to do a quick, you know, collapse. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That seems pretty good. That's good. Now, let's look at the tip. If you were to to look just at the tip where where the aluminum fits on the inside of the the outer section over there, the very tip of the boom pole. Okay. Biggest thing I'm going to point out is that Deity probably should have taken that piece and made it black. I'm a big advocate for having all black on boom poles. Having a big you know chrome piece like that is not ideal because what can happen is if it's if is it if it's shining like that it could show up in reflections now granted if they're looking at marketing this as eng it's not going to be as big of a deal but if they were to release a design that's for boom operators and feature films and stuff that's the same exact thing but longer first of all 86 the uh, foam people are not going to like that at all uh, but i'd also say make that completely black at the tip the knuckles uh, they look like they're they're a gray, like a dark gray, metallic yeah. type gray. Mm-hmm. Okay, kind of what Apple calls space gray, I'd say. So if they were to make one that's designed for for boom operators on film sets, I'd say make those black also, make those darker. I mean, granted, it's not going to be a game changer. It's not going to be something that, oh man, look at them. This is this is the big thing right there that makes this boom pole worthy. Is um, that because I mean most boom uh, boom poles on the market aren't completely jet black they're usually they got something that's that's gray on there the more black there is on a boom pole the better it is but um that tip did not look bad at all there's no wiggle in there at all i'm, I'm assuming by the way kevin broman said this pull the plastic tip off of the carbon fiber pole then slip off the knuckle yeah that's pretty well adhered there i feel like at least on my copy it feels like it's it's glued on or something mm. Is that typical for that to be glued on? It depends on the design. Okay. Like I've not, yeah. I've not seen this particular design of a pole. I've, if if you looked at it and you kind of tried to figure it out, they, you, some brands they put very little epoxy on that, and if you put a lot of torque on it, it will break free. Or if you heat it up, it will break free. Also, it looks like Deity is securing it properly, which is good. It's it's designed to not really break. It's so far. DD is getting a, a lot of thumbs up from me. I mean, without me even touching the thing, it looks <laughs> to me like like there's a lot of of good things put into that. They on the 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 butt into the boom pole. The only thing I could say is is what is that plastic? That's when you took it off there. The the lock on the inside. What is that plastic? Because it's the same kind of plastic on at the the cap end of every one of these poles, the extension poles, right? Whatever Wait, that plastic this, this? is. Well, that and on the inside of each section, oh, on the bottom got it, got part it, of each it, section, it. whatever yeah. that plastic is, yeah. if it is a plastic that's designed to not transfer noise, it's more more difficult to transfer noise through, that would be better. Usually some those kinds of materials are the ones that um, – can the shiny metal tip be spray-painted black? I wouldn't. I mean the reason why is because it's going to still flake off. It's going to – I mean if anything, what I would say, Liberty – is taking a little piece of like we was talking about the very very end there if anything i would say put heat shrink on it once you screw that into your microphone anything you see if you put like a piece of heat shrink that's the 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 width of that that carbon fiber section there for example if you put a piece of heat shrink slid it over the end of the boom pole put your shock bound on there slid it all the way back up that will tell you the base that screw right there right where the um the washer is then if you just gently apply a little bit of heat, not too much because you don't want to break the, the carbon fiber on the inside, but that little bit of heat should be enough to shrink down the tubing. That would make that completely black at the end. They give you – the tip is interesting because it's not designed for you to internally cable, but the tip design being that there's a little window in that, if you look there at the tip of that, it has a window built into that, which is designed for you to add some sort of a – you know, if you wanted to permanently attach a cable – 
If not, they could very easily secure it all the way around, make it. Now, they might have done that for less material. They might have done that for to make it a, little, a couple of grams lighter. Yeah, that's typically what I've seen on poles that are that are internally cabled. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Usually it's that kind of a tip, a flow through style tip. Yep. So yep. they might have been they might have put that little window in there in case you wanted to throw a cable through there, solder on an end or something like that. But um that's usually where where you see those. So all in all, I would say not bad. It's um it's designed for a hundred and eighty five or uh dollars, you said is basically mm -hmm. the design. Yep. I think we determined and you could refresh my memory on this, that the foam really didn't seem to help or hurt anyway. It didn't really seem to, to matter. So you could take that off and you're not going to see any, any drastic performance difference. The knuckles, they seem to be, you know, done well. Mm -hmm. The only tweak I might make would be the plastic on the inside there. And I need to look at it in closer detail um, because it, it did, did the, pla the plastic stayed on there. Normally, if it's a monopod style design and you were to completely un- you know, slide it out of the carbon fiber, the two hemispheres fall apart. Ah. And that's when you have to, you have to kind of, you know, there'll, there'll be some sort of a little, you know, jigsaw look at design. You have to stick them together on both sides in order for the hemispheres to come together. It looked like that was all one piece though. Is that correct? Yep. One and so piece. that looks like there was one piece. They probably put some epoxy on there, put it on there and, you know, got mm -hmm. it on there good and solid, which is good. That's good um, design. The only question I would have is if they were to do a different type of, plastic on the inside would that give it less transfer because that's the main point right there where each carbon fiber section is going together and um i think the the handling noise going through there any that we were actually hearing which was very little any of that would be dissipated if they used a different type of plastic on the inside i think it would it would it would help but it's not a game a game it's not a a, a breaker uh, what is it what am i deal trying to breaker? say deal breaker deal, deal breaker it's not a deal breaker at yeah. all yeah um I think for $185, it looks to me from what I could see and what we could what we could hear, it looked to me like it was a it was, you know, a good quality build. The biggest question I have is uh compared to other boom poles that are similarly priced on the market. First of all, most of the time if you buy an inexpensive boom, it's going to be aluminum. Mm -hmm. So the difference yes. is between aluminum and carbon fiber is that carbon fiber is going to be lighter. It's going to also um uh it's going it, it's usually more expensive. Aluminum is usually going to be heavier and usually cheaper. The other thing is if you put if you put that in cold weather, the aluminum will become a heat sink. It will just freeze your hand. Yep. Those are the big things. Does doesn't aluminum also vibrate more than carbon fiber does? It is and, noisier. And, it yeah. is noisier, yeah. Absolutely yeah. is a material. But yeah. the biggest things that you normally will run into is that, like, for example, the KTEC Avalon poles, they come in both graphite and aluminum. The difference uh -huh. in price, I think the, the graphite are like twice the price, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're, and also you can get lighter, I'm sorry, you can get longer boom poles if it's carbon fiber, because by the time you put so much weight into aluminum, it's going to like mm, kill you. So <laughs> it's easier to get longer poles if it's, if it's carbon fiber. So far though, I think that, um, you know, that seems okay. Uh, what is that last question that Christopher asked? Let's put that up here for you. How would the DD boom pole compare to the road? I have no idea. I have, I, the, I, I have the, well, there are several, I think there are a few different road boom poles. There is the original, which is aluminum. And it's, I have, I actually bought one of those as a comparison for other boom poles. Um, this is. It didn't have knuckles on it. Is that the tube style that just kind of, tu the tubes that kind of go inside of the, I, with no knuckles? No, I think there were knuckles. I think there are mm. knuckles. They're not they're not very good knuckles, but there, there are knuckles. Um, this is def I would say the deity is a substantial step up from that one. And that one I think is like this I, I can't remember the price, seventy nine dollars, hundred mm -hmm. hundred dollars, somewhere in there. So but that was probably I think, aluminum though, right? Yeah, that's aluminum. But I think yeah. that Road also made a carbon fiber pull at some point too. I don't know if they still do. I know they announced it at some point. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So Christopher, to answer your question, I don't know which of the road poles you're referring to, but the aluminum one, this is definitely a step up from the deity is a big step up from the road aluminum pole. I would say road has never sent me a boom pole and I'm not about to go out of my way to buy a 23rd pole. Yeah. Um, so basically <laughs> what I'll do is, is if I'm sent something, I'll compare it to what I know in that price range. The pro stuff I can tell you all about. I can tell you about the main five brands or even six brands before Loon, when defunct to when, um, 
Don Wetzel died. But there's the, the main five brands that you normally see on sets, uh, the two American brands, PSC and KTEC. And then you see the German brand Ambient. You see uh, Panamic out of the UK. And then you see VDB out of France. So those are the main five that you run into. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you about those all over the, the place. Um, in the real world, I teach a class. And part of what I do is I, I break down and talk about the different comparisons of those and talk about you know some of the legacy booms that you might run into some of the differences between you know and and changes and and updates that they made over the course of the years but um i think for a first i mean from what i can tell the dd looks like they were trying to to fix some problems on some of the the other things because first of all you run into many of the the more discount boom poles are not graphite or carbon fiber they're normally more aluminum but that looks to me like it's pretty solid. It almost looks like those knuckles, they're CNC aluminum, milled aluminum, they said, which is good. That means that that talking about maintenance, for example, you can use anything that cleans aluminum on that. But the only thing is you can't slide it completely off there very easily. Mm-hmm. So the big question I would have is, you know, um, you know, if you wanted to completely slide it all the way off, you're you're not going to be able to. So if you wanted to completely tear down the boom and clean it off on the inside, like any of the KTAX, any of the the booms that I have over there that are more premium, you're able to slide off the knuckles and completely dissect it if you want to. Um, but no, I, th- I think that um, talking about maintenance, for, exa- uh, for example, for a second, if you have CNC milled aluminum or any kind of aluminum whatsoever, one of the things you can clean it very effectively with that I absolutely love is... Uh, let's see, where is it? Hops number nine, gun borer cleaner. This is one of the things I teach in one of the classes that this to me cleans aluminum very well. I love the way it smells too. Anybody that does <laughs> cleaning guns, it will smell like a gun on set and it just has a really strong masculine smell. Your testosterone level is going to spike oh, as soon as you start boy. using that. It's going to be okay. amazing. Yeah. Um, cleaning. Sure you, keep, keep, your, keep your finger on that pulse. Make sure it doesn't get out of hand. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, and then if you want to clean um, graphite or aluminum, really, one of the best things that I found is basically 409, which oh. you can find pretty much any place. That and, is something that so, if you, so, so that's going to get the grease and the, the sweat that's all accumulated on the If pole. there's anything on there, absolutely. Okay. And I would usually say put something on when you put something on there, make sure you use a, fi- a fiber, um, a microfiber, microfiber cloth yeah. as opposed to anything that can have little particles break off. Personally, I like to get the very plush ones like this one here. Is extremely plus you can even see this here is labeled pledge because normally what i'll try to do is if i pick a certain chemical i will usually try to not change out the chemical that has been on that in the past and speaking of that if you want to add a high sheen or if your hand sticks it all to the carbon fiber then what you can use is something like this uh pledge furniture polish with orange oil this is actually going to um it's going to give it a nice you know citrusy type smell to it it's going to mm-hmm. feel really good now the biggest thing about that is it's going to make it really slick so if you put it on there <laughs> you put it on there then you want to wipe it back off now once you apply it on with something like this i would say when you're going to polish it and want to try to pull off any any of that use a very plush like see how thick and plush this one is yeah this is a very very plush if i fold this into quarters like this see how thick this monster is wow this is like you know, an inch and a half thick, and it's just folded over in half and then in half again versus this one here, which is, you know, that much. It's very, very small. Still plush, but it's very small. So the very plush right there is what I normally will use to take that kind of stuff off. Very, very good. Um, Question. Sir. Um, so if I do put pledge on, when you're queuing... Are you going to actually put it between like between fingers or and, and actually let it kind of move or do you do you do you rotate your wrist as you're cueing the the front wrist? What I will usually try to do is is be, uh, is be as very delicate as I can with the end of the boom. You don't want if you can touch uh, touch the pole onto your hand and you try to move your hand so the pole does not actually rotate. That's only what I do. If I have to roll it someplace, I'll usually try to get it in my fingers if I can. If not, and I have to actually roll it, I will try to roll it straight down my finger in such a way. Then then the bone is not perfect, so you'll sometimes hear the bone click. But um, but trying to roll it as you okay. Okay. see fit, that's usually a better approach than um, 
than you know actually you know sliding it in such a way where you, yeah. you hear it with your hand yeah where you're gonna get that it, friction and that and that's gonna transfer all to the mic absolutely yeah. anything okay. you do with your hands is going to potentially uh transmit through into the microphone and transfer okay. transfer all the way through Interesting question from Robert. Um, what's okay. the difference between carbon fiber and graphite? Okay. Um, basically, here's the difference. You can take different blends of carbon fiber tubes, and some of they're, they're not all even. That's the reason why you can make bicycles out of carbon fiber very dense. But different carbon fiber tubes are drawn together depending on the strength. And once they, they put them together and compress it, they will will add some sort of a thing to hold it together. Usually, something that's um, you know some sort of adhesive. You know, it could be epoxy or it could be whatever. I'm not 100 percent sure on what each brand does, but I know some of them they will they will draw it together and then they apply heat. If it is, as I understand it, 2200 degrees and above, curing for multiple hours, then what happens is the carbon fiber breaks down a little bit, becoming a little bit more brittle and flexible, creating graphite. If it's cured at anything below 2200 degrees, then it, it then it retains its full strength. It doesn't break down the carbon fiber, and therefore it's it's what we call carbon fiber. It's all still carbon, 92% carbon at the very minimum. But mm -hmm. usually that's the difference is it breaks down into higher heat, and therefore it will become more flexible. So like K-Tech boom poles, for example, those are a lot more flexible. The carbon fiber on that is more flexible. And the difference is carbon fiber that is flexible, what you're able to do is it will take out a little bit of the spring. So you'll have... Um, you'll have, for example, let's just use this, for example, as a, as a microphone. If you have a boom pole that's extended and that, oops, let's do this. And you have a boom pole and it's extended out, that carbon fiber, if the, the microphone starts bouncing up and down, carbon fiber that is, that is more graphite will bounce and spring, preventing this from moving nearly as much. So the microphone itself will hold, it will take some of the flex out so the microphone doesn't move. Now the carbon fiber ones that are, that are cured, the more stiff ones like the ambience, those are less forgiving. Those are more pencil straight. So those don't bend and bow nearly as much. So you have to be a little bit more delicate with your hand. So depending on the brands of boom that you have that you have available to you, you want to try them to see how the flex is. Because if you do a walk and talk, you might want to have your microphone, you know, stay relatively the same where your pole will bounce and take, you know, some of that, you know, spring in your step out. Mm -hmm. You might want to have a pencil straight boom. Personally, I like to have it pencil straight or st or very, you know, with very little movement in there because I'll snap a boom quick. And if I snap yeah. it, I don't want it to go, you know, like right. that's in a little exaggeration. But, right. But right. personally. Now, if you do, since I want to go back to pledge for a second, if you do put pledge on a boom, you want to try to get as much of it as you possibly can off of it. The exception to that is if you have something like the old QS boom pole from Ambient, um, which is now discontinued with the Series 5. What I did with that one is because my, my I loved the pole, everything about it, but I was like, my hand is just, it's sticking to it. So what I did is I put pledge on each section, ran it up, stuck it in the front of the house for you know a day, left the pledge on there for a full day. My wife kept looking at it saying, when are we going to take this thing down? And then when I <laughs> collapsed it, I, I started by wiping down each section to remove as much of that pledge as I could. Then I brought the next section and did the exact same thing. And what that did is it kind of soaked into the boom just a little bit, keeping keeping it so that way it wasn't just like really slimy to your hand, but it mm -hmm. made it extra slippery. Now, if you do something like this, it's on your own. Don't come and say, sounds <laughs> just told me to do it. It's something that that I found that is successful, that's good. Another trick that you can use if you um, are getting some handling noise out, and again, same kind of thing, don't, mm -hmm. hold, you know, don't hold me responsible, hold Curtis responsible if you try any of these. This is his stream. There's the disclaimer for you. Um, if you take, uh, for example, you like use rubber gloves, mm -hmm. make water as hot as you can out of your tap to the point where if you put a, a washcloth through it or something like this, mm -hmm. you know, a microfiber cloth, then it's going to be scorching hot, too hot, hot for you to want to touch. Mm -hmm. If you take it, quickly wring it out, put it instantly on the section of boom pole. What that will do is it will kind of open up the pores ever so slightly. As you continue to wipe that down, take that off, grab a white, uh, uh, a dry one, run it up and down. Sometimes what that will do is it will, that compression and expansion of the uh, carbon fiber won't break it or hurt it. But what that might do is it might trap a little bit of the moisture on the inside that that helps it to dense up a little bit. So it will it. perhaps slide differently on your hands. Some carbon fibers, not all of them do. Yep. If it has any kind of a sheen on it at all, it's not going to. It's not going to soak in. But if it is a... If it's a carbon fiber without a sheen on it, 
what I've done in the past is I've sometimes used sandpaper on it and and just taken a 600 or plus grain sandpaper, hold the boom upside down because you don't want to end up having the carbon fiber sections go right back in the knuckles. I hold it upside down, use a little bit of light sandpaper on there, wipe it off, and then I use one of those tricks, either the wipe it off with the 409 to get all of it off until it's not coming onto the, the rags anymore. And then once that happens, and I've gotten it all off of there, then I'll usually put something like the the hot water trick or the pledge, and then I'll kind of lock it in place. Okay. So those are a few different things for you to think about. Cool. Um, there been any other other yeah. interesting yeah. Uh, questions going all the yeah. way? Yeah, are beginning? you are you okay on time? We're a little over. You're talking to the guy that does 19 hour live streams. Of course, I'm fine. Okay, here's the next <laughs> question. Okay, if, if money, money was money, a... yeah. Okay, here's what I'm going to tell you. My favorite brand of boom pole is not one I talk about a whole lot on sound speeds. The reason why is because every boom pole is different. Everybody's hands and what they want is different. There are many good brands of boom pole out there. If you and, and and I'm not going to, I don't want my preferences to just be something that people instantly go with because sound speed said it. Mm -hmm. I usually say, get a boom pole in your hand, figure out what you like about it. As I was talking about before. Stiffer boom poles versus more flexible boom poles. You may say, well, straight up, you know, I want a boom pole that will absorb some of that, like the KTAC. But then you might want to have it be extremely snappy and, and something like that, like an ambient. But then there's also like PSC poles, which are right down the middle, that, that are usually a combination of a little bit springy, but a little bit stiffer. Panamic, you cannot uh, route a cable through there at all. If you're doing anything like that, it's different. It's you're, you're over. It also has a nylon wrap on the outside of it. So because of that nylon webbing, it will it doesn't slide nearly as well if you slide your hand but a lot of people like the way that feels because it grabs hold of your your hands you don't have to hold it nearly as strong it also dissipates some of that handling noise so but each section depending on the inside it could be pressurized so you can actually when you collapse a pole vertically it goes and allows some of it i'm working on a boom uh, on a boom review for the panamic um just so you know the maxi there's the mini midi and maxi different uh, brands if you're talking about vdbs those are using more sections. They have a, a knuckle design that only goes quarter twi twist on and off. Um, VDB does never, never responds to any of my emails, never responds to anything. I've tried calling them years ago. Hmm. They didn't even pick up their phone. So, you know, I, I just, I couldn't get any information out of them. I know they, they sometimes go to some trade shows and stuff. If I ever saw them, I would ask them and say, what, what gives? Um, <laughs> but um, whenever I do the real life classes, I have, you know, Every brand except VDB and PSC, uh, both of those are, you know, PSC is pay to play. And I'm like, you know, there's so many other brands that I have. I don't, like I said before, I don't need to buy more things. So if I'm just going to be buying it to show people in a class, I'll just show people the other ones. So I won't have those as a comparison. Not about to spend, you know, a few hundred dollars just to have an extra one to, to potentially show. Um, and then VDB is the same kind of way. You know, they're usually higher gloss. So there's, there's shinier segments. VDB changed about 15 years ago. It used to be that the carbon fiber sections were ridiculously light because they were a very strong blend of very, very thin section carbon fibers. The And uh, the poles were extremely light. If you can find one of those old school ones on sale, if anything, they might creak a little bit sometimes, but that's usually the, on the inside of the knuckles. But those old school VDBs are hard to beat because they were extremely light, very, very stiff blend. Um, but... Um, they were very yet extremely light um, that when they, then they had a, a management change or something like that about 15 years ago, or they just went in a different direction. Now all their poles are extremely high gloss. So they, they, they will stick personally to my hands, but they might slide perfectly over yours. There are also more sections. So they're usually five sections as opposed to like the boom that you just, you un, undid the knuckle right there and took it straight off. The mm -hmm. knuckles on those are designed to be just quarter inch. So you have to flip it over to the butt end of the boom and you take off the screw, which which has a little rubber bumper on the bottom that's colored for the different size of boom. It could be blue, red, yellow, whatever. You unscrew it there, and you pull out each section, drawing each carbon fiber section through. But you have to unlock the knuckle and then literally release it and pull the sections out. So that's how you would do maintenance. There's actually a video online about that. Um, so, I mean, there's different pros and cons. The only two modular style boom uh, manufacturers right now, the most modular is KTEC. So if you want to buy a boom pole that's going to be able to take anything that you run through it, whether it's a straight cable, a coil cable, or un uncabled altogether, KTEC's the company to go to. You have so many modules. Now, Ambient's done something very similar with their Series 5, 
Um, I think KTEC personally implemented it a little bit better. I like the KTEC design better. It also, they're thicker poles, which gives you more room to play and throw cables through there. Um, the KTEC cables are really hard to beat when you're running on the inside of a boom. They're very good. The best cable, in my opinion, used to be the Loon ones. Those Loon ones, though, dis uh, were discontinued when Don Wetzel died and Loon went away. But the Loon poles were solid. Uh, Manfred Clemmy and Don Wetzel were some of the initial people um, involved in manufacturing the first boom poles for KTEC. And then Don, Don and Manfred went in different directions and, and Don started doing his own thing. So if you can get a loon, you'd probably uh, like it. They used to actually put a little bit of air, I think it was, or maybe they pumped nitrogen into the casing of their, um, of their uh, coiled uh, cables because they, they wanted, I don't, I don't, Don told me about it like 3 a.m. one night. He said, you can call me anytime. <laughs> I called him at 3 a.m. He happened to be awake and was like so happy to talk because <laughs> what he started doing in his later years is he didn't watch the clock. He would wake up in the morning. He'd go out and make boom holes. And he was like, a, you know, a genius, like mm -hmm. insane. He would make boom poles. As soon as he got tired, he'd go inside and sleep, wake up the next morning. He'd go out there. So his schedule, he could work a 20, he could work a 20 hour day and then he'd go to sleep and sleep for eight or 10 hours and then wake up and his days would shift. But that's all he, he did in retirement is basically he made boom poles and that's what he loved. So if he happened to answer his phone, cool. If he didn't, could be asleep. And I called him and he said, yeah, call me anytime. So I called him at 3 a.m. one day on my drive home just to see if he was going to chew me out. Oh, hey, Alan, how you doing? <laughs> well, let's talk. You, you have some questions for me? Like, I did. And so we started talking boom poles and the man was wow. brilliant. Wow. Um, wow. But he actually put like nitrogen on the inside of the, um, I don't remember what it was for. I think it was like to, to help take some of the, the, the creakiness of a boom cable that was, that was coiled cable. He would do that. But another thing is that those, most of the time, the coiled cables are only designed to safely extend out about four times the, the length of their, their normal, you know, stretchiness. His were five. His were, were more so. Okay. Um, I mean, it was, it was brilliant. But every single manufacturer, like I said, currently on the market, I think the KTEC cables are hard to beat. I think they're the best. Um, better than the ambience, better than any of the other ones that I've seen. Um, their locking mechanism also going into the TA3 on the inside of their coil cables are so much better and more superior, in my opinion, than anything else. There's, um, but then, of, of course, also different brands like, you know, Ambient, um, they do have modul modular boom poles, very similar to the KTEX, but KTEX been doing it longer and their sections are bigger. So they're, they, I think, able to implement it better. But the, uh, the Ambient ones are stiffer and they're more responsive uh, if you do quick movements. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're slightly heavier too. Ambient's always had the approach of having slightly he heavier booms that are more responsive. So being that, that, um, that if you want a responsive boom, if you like that, then you might like ambience. It also depends on the the texture and the way that it goes in your hands too. PSEs, like I said, they're they're usually just you know they're they're very similar in design. I think to the to the deity one, it's just that it's it's there are differences that make it uh, more premium. But then the VDB is you know collapsible down. The knuckles are quarter turn. They also have little rings that they, or, or little uh, bands on the inside of each carbon fiber section, which are colored so you can extend out to the green one. And, you know, every single time you collapse the pole, extend it back out to the exact same place again. So, I mean, every brand is different and you have yeah. to kind of get your hands on them to see what you like the best. Yeah. Speaking of hands, would you use thin goat skin mitts, Jazz asks? No. I mean, maybe if if it was... If I wanted it for warmth in the winter or something, maybe. But mm -hmm. normally the ones I use are the Mechanics, M-E-C-H-A-N-I-X, 0.5 millimeter gloves. To me, they're like form-fitting, practically like skin tight, but it also is reinforced on the inside here for quickly wrapping cables. If you've watched any of my videos on wrapping cables quickly, it develops a lot of friction. But I like the form-fitting nature of it. I don't use the black cotton gloves. Rubber, the very, I'm mean, not rubber, um, uh, leather, very thin leather will also be very quiet. It's a very soft leather. Mm -hmm. So I personally use those if I have to use gloves at all on a boom for whatever okay. reason. Okay. Have either of you had a chance to look at the K-Tech Aero? No. Boom. I uh, K-Tech has, has um, only sent me the Mighty Boom and they gave me one of the five section Mighty Booms uh, basically to show in classes and stuff that I teach. But I've not, I need to almost, you know, contact Tino and say, hey, to me an arrow i keep having people ask me about that because i've seen videos about it online i would love to actually get my hand on it 
because I think it's pr- the price point now with inflation stuff is around 120 bucks. I think mm-hmm. they put a lot of their tech in uh, that's using the more premium booms into the arrow. So it's the same know-how, the same genius behind the KTEX that uh, is used in the arrow. It's just on a, on a cheaper price point. What link do you recommend for a boom operator between narrative, documentary, commercial, st- and corporate jobs? It depends. Depends on what you want. Normally, if you're doing ENG style, I would say you don't need to have a boom longer than maybe 10 or 12 feet at the most. Mm-hmm. Usually, usually between eight and 10 feet is going to serve you just fine. What do you normally use, Curtis? Mine, I see, I have a KTEC Avalon. That's my main pole. Uh, I think it's 11. It's about 11. And that's yeah. plenty for me. I've never had to use all of the length, actually. Yeah. For the usually eight work. to 10 feet is usually what, what I usually recommend for ENG. It's going to be small enough to go nearly, you know, you know, nearly in everything that you pack luggage wise. It's yeah. going to be small enough to fit on a, on your harness without you kicking it a lot. Cause that's another thing too, is if you have it, you're running and you just have it clipped onto you and you run, you don't want to end up having your knee hit it. Right. You know, cause, cause that's bad. So having something that's good, you know, two feet or something like that, like the length of the deity one here is going to be just fine. Cause it'll stick up, you know, around here and it'll, it won't be kicked. Um, if you're flying for a job or gig, do you check your boom pole in a case or carry on now? I've never done that. I've always driven to any of the, the, the shows that I've done. Now I do know that somebody in my discord server recently uh, posted that he checked one of his booms and whoever it was in air in the airport like damaged his boom beyond repair he said by probably looking for drugs or something like that stashed inside of it it used mm-hmm. to be a problem about 15 20 years ago where people in the tsa they didn't know what in the world it was they thought it could be a pipe bomb or anything so they would literally cut it straight open and then look in each half because they didn't want to just unscrew it and whatever. They probably looked at it and says, whatever this thing is, and they would cut literally through whatever it is and destroy the entire pole. And then say, well, there was no drugs in it now. We know. But I mean... (laughs) Now the pole's destroyed. It it completely destroyed the pole. Exactly. So um, what I have heard people normally will do now, I have not double-checked this. It depends on your carrier, obviously. I'm going to call them and find out in advance if you're planning on doing it. But there are TSA style locks that you can get to put on something. If you get yourself a boom pole and you get a a case of some sort, like, you know, Plano makes like fish poles cases and stuff and different mm-hmm. types of companies make um, make cases that you can put a lock on, get a TSA lock so that way the TSA can unlock it. And then on the inside of that, um, I would say try to carry it on if you can. They'll probably take it from you at some point. But if you were to say, look, don't cut the thing open, I can show, I'll gladly show it to anybody right now, leave all the sections loose on the inside and say, don't cut it open. You don't need to. I'll show you right now. Bring your drug sniffing dog over here and smell it, whatever. You'll realize there's nothing on this thing. Mm -hmm. But try to take, take it as a carry on. They'll probably take it from you either when you check your luggage initially or when you get up to the, uh, the plane. If you can carry it on, carry it on. If they, if they let you, if it's small enough. If you have a feature link boom that's like four or five feet, you might have more difficult time doing that. But yeah. that's when you get a TSA lock and you put it on the inside and make sure you tell them, do not cut this thing open because you do and you're destroying a you know thousand dollar thing. Mm-hmm. There's not you're not gonna find anything on the inside. I'll show I'll guarantee it. Now, if you really <laughs> wanted to be overly cautious, I would say disassemble the entire boom. This is what I would do, actually, if I was going to fly internationally or something like that. I would get a tube that's big enough for me to send a, dis, uh, a disassembled boom. I would, I would take all the, car, um, the carbon fiber sections apart. I would mm-hmm. take all the, the, the knuckles, put them completely separate. So that way, when you open it up and look at it, each of the carbon fiber tubes are separate. So that way, they would look at it and hold each section up, and they can look in and realize there's nothing on the inside. That's probably what I would do. It's completely disassembled. It would take more time. And if you're going to end up having to run a cable through and solder it, then you're going to have to deal with that later when you get to the other side. Personally, though, that's what I would do if I were going to fly with it. And I wanted to make sure they weren't going to, you know, cut in half one of my four or five foot booms. If you're talking about smaller, you know, boom poles, then check in luggage, you know, check in luggage. luggage. Absolutely. That's what I would do. Yep. Yep. Alan, thank you so much. I am getting the cue that I am way overdue. (laughs) Um, thank you for coming today and sharing sure. your knowledge and uh, so many great, just great techniques and, and things that we can put to use. 
learn learn a ton every time you come on. So thank you so much. Absolutely. And if anybody has any questions about uh, booms that we're not, you know, uh, that we didn't get to in the chat or something like that, feel free to to shoot me an email at alan at soundspeeds.us and I'll answer it. That is a .us, by the way. Okay. So, cool. And you can, of course, it, I think most of you know, but just in case anybody doesn't, you can also find amazing information on YouTube at sound, just search for sound speeds. And there's tons and tons of great videos going back six years now of, yep. of great information. Almost 500 so. videos at this point. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that's more a lot. Than I have. <laughs> Good deal. Uh, thank you so much, Alan. Thanks, everyone, all the soundies for joining us today. Get out there and make some great sound this week. And we'll talk to you again soon. Take care, Absolutely. everybody. Thanks for coming in. All right.